Welcome to the Olive Grove. Uh, this is uh, just going to be our our Bible studies, just just to help you to grow in your walk with the Lord. Um, throughout the Bible, an olive tree is a, is a symbol of spiritual richness. It's our goal to uh, to grow you in your ability to listen and to follow the, the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy. In our study of Joshua chapter 4, we will look at the importance of remembering what God has done in the past. We will look at another example of God telling His people to mark either a day or a location to help them to remember His work on their behalf. After the whole nation had finished crossing the Yarden, Adonai said to Joshua, Take for yourselves from the people twelve men, a man from every tribe, and give them this order, Take twelve stones from the middle of the Yarden riverbed, where the Kohanim are standing, carry them over with you and set them down in the place where you will camp tonight. We see that Israel is referred to here as nation and, any time we see this in the Bible, it is to be a reminder of God's promise to Abraham saying he would make Abraham into a great nation or goy gadol. After the people had crossed, God had the leaders take stones from the dry riverbed and carry them to their camp for the night. We see that each tribe was supposed to be represented so that they would all have a witness to share with the generations to come. We are reminded that, throughout the Bible, the number 12 is associated with divine power. These memorial stones would remind the people that it was the power of God that stopped the waters. Joshua called the twelve men whom he had chosen from the people of Israel, a man from every tribe, and said to them, Go on ahead of the ark of Adonai your God into the riverbed of the Yarden. Then, each of you take a stone on his shoulder, corresponding to the number of tribes of the people of Israel. This will be a sign for you. In the future, when your children ask, What do you mean by these stones? You will answer them, It's because the water in the Yarden was cut off before the ark for the covenant of Adonai. When it crossed the Yarden, the water in the Yarden was cut off, and these stones are to be a reminder for the people of Israel forever. In chapter 3, we looked at walking in the power of God. Here we see the fact that God wants us to remember that He is the source of all power. The danger for us, as mere men, is that we can get so caught up in the power that we have that it can go to our heads. This can open the door to pride which separates us from God just as it did with Satan. We also see that we have to tell others that it is God at work and not ourselves. This is especially true for our children and grandchildren as we see that these stones were to be a reminder for the children of those who crossed the Jordan. This testimony is how we overcome the schemes of the devil as we see in Revelation 12. There is power in remembering and sharing what God has done and that is why the devil tries to keep us quiet. The people of Israel did just as Joshua had ordered. They took twelve stones out of the yard and riverbed, as Adonai had said to Joshua, corresponding to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, carried them over with them to the place where they were camping, and set them down there. Joshua also set up twelve stones in the yard and river itself, in the place where the feet of the Kohanim carrying the ark for the covenant had stood. They are there to this day. The people did as Joshua had told them and the stones were laid as a memorial at their camp, Gildal. That makes us ask the question, where is Gildal today? The short answer is that nobody knows as Gildal refers to places that Israel camped. We can be sure that the stones are still there, but we just don't know where that camp was located other than the fact that it was east of Jericho. The stones themselves were not important as they were only a tool that God used to help his people remember what he had done for them. They were a reminder of the fact that God had made a way for them through his power and not by anything they did. These people were going to face many challenges especially in dealing with the false gods of the people of Canaan. The only way for them to overcome those challenges was to remember that there is only one God and he takes care of his people. The same thing is true for us today as there are so many distractions that we can easily lose sight of the fact that God is in control and He is able. When you are faced with a struggle, stop and go back to your Gilgal. This is the point in your life where you accepted Yeshua Messiah and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember what He has done and you will have the strength and courage to face whatever is ahead. The Kohanim carrying the ark stood in the yard and riverbed until Joshua had finished saying to the people everything that Adonai had ordered him to say, in keeping with everything that Moshe had ordered Joshua, then the people hurried across. When all the people had finished crossing, 
the Ark of Adonai passed on, and the Kohanim, ahead of the people. We see that the priests and the Ark of the Covenant stayed in the middle of the Jordan holding back the floodwaters until all the people had crossed. This standing in the gap was a picture of what Yeshua did on the cross as well as what we are called to do as Christians. Today, we stand in the gap between God's righteous judgment and a world that does not know Him. Only God knows when the last of His children will accept Yeshua and judgment will begin. We must remember the importance of sharing our testimony so that others can get to their own Gilgal. The descendants of Reuven, the descendants of Gad and the half-tribe of Nasha went on, armed, ahead of the people of Israel, as Moshe had said to them, some forty thousand armed soldiers ready for battle crossed in the presence of Adonai to the plains of Yericho. We see that the Israelites crossed over prepared for war to take what God was giving them and we are reminded that we are to do our part here in this world. We have been given authority by Yeshua to walk in victory now as well as in the future. We also see that those that had their home on the other side of the Jordan went out ahead to fight for their brothers. This reminds us of the fact that we are to fight for our brothers and sisters. The Israelites had physical battles to look forward to but ours is more a spiritual battle. We struggle against the deception of the devil to show people the truth which is only found in Yeshua Messiah. That day Adonai made Yoshua great in full view of all Israel. They were in awe of him, just as they had been in awe of Moshe all his life. After seeing the favor of the Lord upon Yoshua, the people respected him and what God was doing through him. It is a crucial point to see that it was the Lord that exalted him and not the number of college degrees or certificates that he had. The same is true for us today in that a true leader is prepared by the Lord and not a course, lecture, or any other man-made thing. Adonai said to Yoshua, Order the Kohanim carrying the ark for the testimony to come up out of the Yarden. So Yoshua ordered the Kohanim, Come up out of the Yarden. The Kohanim carrying the ark for the covenant of Adonai came up from the Yarden riverbed, and as soon as the soles of the feet of the Kohanim touched dry ground, the water of the Yarden returned to its place and the river overflowed its banks as it had before. At his command, the priests carried the ark out of the river and the waters went back to flooding. In this, we see the necessity of remaining in the will of God and directed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our hope, provision and protection from the things of this world are all in Him and where He is. When we choose to do things that are outside of what is best for our lives, outside the will of God, then, we may be flooded with the consequences. We will still be saved for eternity but the effects can make it seem like a hell on earth. The best way to stay in His will is to remember that we are in a spiritual battle. A good soldier for Yeshua Messiah only follows the orders of his master and doesn't go off on their own. The people came up out of the Yarden on the tenth day of the first month and camped at Gilgal, by the eastern boundary of Yericho. Those twelve stones which they took out of the Yarden, Yeshua piled up at Gilgal. The tenth day of the first month was the day that was set aside for selecting the Passover lamb. This lamb was to be taken care of for four days until its sacrifice, see Exodus 12 verse 3. We are reminded that, throughout the Bible, the number four is associated with trials and this was a reminder to the Jews that God would take care of them during their struggles in the promised land. Then he said to the people of Israel, in the future, when your children ask their fathers what these stones mean, you are to explain it to them by saying, Israel came over this yard on dry land. For Adonai your God dried up the water in the Yarden from in front of you, until you had crossed, just as Adonai your God did to the Sea of Suf, which he dried up from in front of us, until we had crossed. Yoshua told the people what they were to tell the future generations. He also reminds them that it was equal to what he had done when he brought them out of Egypt. We notice that it was all about remembering what God had done on their behalf. That was their testimony, what is yours? From this all the peoples of the earth can know that the hand of Adonai is strong, and you can fear Adonai your God forever. As we see, God's purpose in doing this was for all mankind. As Christians, we all benefit from Israel's testimony of deliverance as it builds us up in our faith. For those who do not accept Yeshua Messiah, it is a warning that lets them know that it is not a good idea to mess with God's people. For Israel, it was a reminder to them that there is no other God like the Lord. They had entered a land where there were all kinds of idols and they were to remember the difference between an idol and the Lord God. We hope you've enjoyed this study and we uh, 
hope that if you'd like more information about any of our studies, you go to our website at mychristianspace.com, and we hope to see you back here again. For now, that's all from the Olive Grove.